You're listening to the Breezy Moms Podcast on Digital Stream Radio. It's the end of February, and we are winding down Black History Month with a bang. So excited to be here, so stick around. Hey, everyone. You're listening to the Breezy Moms Podcast, a weekly show that chronicles the adventures of motherhood. I'm Candace. Now let's start the show. Hey. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, Lord. <laughs> you know me. I'm very, very <laughs> extra. Uh, extra. Because why not? All right? the extra. Why not? It's Thursday. Why not be a little bit extra? I'm over here trying to like get this thing to do whatever I wanted to do automatically, and it was just not helping, and now it is. Anyway, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode. Uh, it's looking at my boob. No, it's not. It, it was. was. <laughs> not anymore. Um, God. Sorry, distraction. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of the Breezy Moms Podcast hey. coming to you live on Facebook Live, also on digitalstreamradio.com slash live stream. And, uh, you know, you can access this show, Candace's show, on iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher Radio. You can do... Um, Podbean, Spotify. Spotify. She is in all of the places. All the places, just in case. Just want to catch all the little. She's amazing. All the all the people. She's amazing, and we have uh, a very low key show today, right? Yeah, it's gonna I be think so. All about conversation, things that are going on. Uh, I mean, and- every show can be heavy. Exactly. I mean, it's Black yeah. History Month, and a lot of times people. I mean, it's heavy, right? It's heavy stuff. But there are also some light parts of Black history. So it doesn't always have to be heavy. So I, I want to I remind people that Black History Month is not just all about, like, there's a lot. To, power there, there's and, certainly and a lot to celebrate, protest. too, right? There is a ton to celebrate. And okay, uh, I don't want to talk about the bad stuff. You, you can't not talk about the bad stuff or ignore the bad stuff but we all know the bad stuff and those things have been getting so much play over and over and over again every year it's the same three people that um people talk about at school it's the same three marches people talk about the same you know like we don't talk about any of the other things and some really interesting things in pop culture have come up recently which is helping people talk about other things whether they're still bad or not it doesn't matter but it's 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 a new day um, for Black History Month, where it's not just all about Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and Frederick Dux- Douglass. Like, there's so much more to us. So, so in other words, there's, there's a lot more than just the whitewashed version of Black History Month that you get every year in school. <laughs> yeah, now we got so. we get to talk about Issa Rae, and <laughs> like, all, like all the other cool people. So, mm. yeah, yeah. So anyway, I wanted to make sure that we, you know, have a, a light. Last last week we talked about hysterectomies. I feel like that was really heavy. This week we won't talk so heavy. <laughs> yeah. It's Nobody a back and forth here. Nobody will be losing here. anything today in this episode. It's a episode. back and forth here. So. so anyway, I'm so glad to see you. How are you? Likewise. I'm excited. Good. I got gifts today. And Ooh. I'm super excited to talk about them later. about it a little later. Uh-huh. But, um, but first, um, I have a question for you. I'm listening. Uh, how are your amazing boys those boys of mine they are so great so i want to talk about lincoln i think i talked about lincoln last week but i'm gonna talk about him again because it's worth mentioning it's worth you i feel like usually i have stories about emory because you usually he's remember very rambunctious. yes <laughs> and he's the one you see all the time even in a crowded room you'd see him but em- lincoln see it's he always Lincoln always says to me, "Why do you always call me Emery?" I'm like, "I'm sorry, it's a mom thing. I'm so sorry." Yeah, I know. So anyway, Lincoln has been just shining so shiny and bright the last few weeks that it almost like I'm verklempt thinking about it. And one like a super super descriptive story, or or um, you know, just a little thing he did that really exemplifies how he has just. Bloom Blossom, I don't know. He's going to be six next month. He's just everything right now. So <sighs> last night he um, went upstairs with, with Emery and they were getting ready for bed. So they got ready and then they came back down to the kitchen where we were. And he says to me, Mom, the there was only one pull-ups left. So I gave it to Emery. Oh, That's the whole story. And I was well, like, that's That's what? important, right? That's huge. <laughs> Like, it's just, it's just one of these little, little things, right? That you're just like, okay, maybe we're doing an okay, we're doing a good job that our son is thoughtful and generous. Like, here are the things that I, here are the like gripes that I have with Lincoln, that I buy him a pack of 
new pencils and a day later he has none because he's gone to school and given them out to everybody right or i buy or i get him something i get him something for school a, a pack of new erasers the next day there are no more erasers because he's given it to everybody he is so, so he's a giver thoughtful he is so generous he he has been so interested in like tidying lately. Um, he, we went to the mall to the bounce house and we were out all day and we came back. The first thing he did, he was like, Oh, I need to clean my room. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> my heart. <laughs> Can I get 20 of you? It's amazing. I mean, he says, Mom, I need you to do the laundry right now because our laundry basket is overflowing and then I'll fold it. And I was like, I can do that. Folding is the worst part. <laughs> like, it's just. He's been emptying the dishwasher. Like I feel like he's been learning things about our house in in a way like in a he recognizes things now. I feel like at a certain up to a certain point, things just happen around you. You know, like all of a sudden you have clean clothes or all of a sudden the laundry basket is empty or there are clean dishes in the in the cabinet. You never have to think about it. But at a certain point, he starts you start to realize, oh, the dish, the dishes get clean because someone did them or they come out of the dishwasher and here's where they go. So he's been figuring out where, you know, the pot spoons go from where the sink, the plates go from where his the kid things go and the daycare things he's been helping out a lot cleaning up and and I don't I don't say this I don't mean for this to sound like I'm putting them to work cuz you got to put them to work but I'm not really putting them to work. Well, you got to show them just, a little bit of responsibility. Yes, but he has just been st- stepping up and I think a, a I think a lot of that has been in the last couple of weeks with James uh, sort of partially out of commission. Um I think that he's seen that there are things that need to get done because I can't I honestly can't do all of the things so I, I'm I'm like really super proud of that. I'm so proud of him for being um, getting to this sort of maturity stage. Like he's still I mean, before I got here, he was pouring orange soda on the table and drinking it off the table like he's still a kid. He's still wild and crazy. But when it matters, like he he'll, he'll give Emery the last pull ups. Meanwhile, they shouldn't be sharing pull ups because Emery is too small for these pull ups. But Emery thinks that he's bigger and emery has a whole pack of, di- of um diapers that he can wear for the overnights but he likes wearing these other ones and lincoln knows that but he let him have it anyway so are you are you, are you still seeing accidents with with emery um at, at this well point? with both i mean they're for overnight okay and they're mostly because i can't be doing laundry um sheet laundry more than once on whatever like slow schedule i'm doing it and it isn't always but it's enough that i don't want to do it it's understandable yeah. and it makes it easy right mm-hmm. and there's no there's no wrong way yeah. to to deal with the fact that you know you still have children that may wet themselves from time to time and and it's just nighttime like he's mostly good during the day um i don't think emery has had an, a real accident in a while and lincoln also does really well he sometimes wears the same pull-up for a second night in the row because he doesn't actually um have an accident just recently though he did and it's probably because they were drinking milk like in bed you know it was after the time and they i should have made them go to the bathroom one last time and also i am extra okay with them wearing pull-ups because they're sleeping in my bed and i just don't want any extra pee in my bed or wake up in the middle of the night like there's something moist because what i'm gonna admit here in front of everybody is that i have put a towel on it and gone back to sleep i mean i don't know who these superhero people are who in the middle of the night when like i don't know a little throw up gets on the bed like a little throw up has never killed anybody (laughs) You just get a nice fresh towel, you spray it with some Febreze, and you put the towel down because you can't, you cannot lose any more sleep. It's, like, that's well, just not a thing. Sleep is precious. It's not a thing that I'm willing to give up. So in case you're out there and you have, on more than one occasion, slept in a bed that maybe had some pee in it. Like, you're not alone. You're not alone. Don't feel ashamed. Don't let anybody shame you. Until you have children, you don't understand. When you don't have children, you have all the energy in the world to, in the middle of the night, get up and be like, oh, I need to change the sheets and put on fresh pillowcases and all kinds of stuff. No, no, you just roll over to a new spot. You got to do what you got to do. Listen, I have a friend of mine that um, driving from one destination to another was, it was, 
this person, I'm trying to speak in, in terms of not trying to identify the person, is, wanted to get to their destination so bad, they didn't even want to stop. Uh, so they just peed on themselves in the, in car. the car. Oh, that's the worst place, though, to keep pe- to pee. driving. So it's right? all closed so, up. So the person knew that she had the seat thing that sort of kind of, you know, massages oh. the warmth. So there's something between the seat <laughs> and, and the car. And the car. <laughs> And, or you and and the seat, and so you have something in the middle, and there's a cushion, and so you just fine, it'll absorb. Oh go God. do what you got to do. Okay, I um, might be judging this person. <laughs> oh Lord, have mercy! <laughs> and so you know, you just do what you got to do, especially when you're stuck in like traffic, and it's like you know that 95 is like the worst. Uh huh. Now, if you told me that was a mom who had like a couple kids in the back and pee, it was either pee in the seat. Or get four kids out of the car and into the store, like out of car seats and into the store, all the way in the back of the store where they put the bathroom. Okay, I might, I might pee in the seat yeah. if it's a choice between those two things. I cannot. Um, so, uh, hi, Nicole. Nicole is watching. She said hello to all of us here. And, Nicole uh, who? I can't uh, see. Nicole Richardson. Oh, hi. Mm, which Nicole? I know multiple Nicole Richardsons. I can't see. Where is it? It's right here. Oh, I know that, Nicole. Hi, Miss hi. Nicole. That's Miss Nicole. Okay. okay. Hi, Miss Nicole. That was our first daycare provider for Lincoln. Oh, nice. And so it's really fun because she... Um, I know that she sees him. She knows him from when he was six months old. And then we um, and then she closed. She retired in daycare. So we had to go somewhere else. So we just see her. She lives right down the street from us. And every once in a while, we'll see her. And it must be, you know, kind of cool for her to see how big. I mean, he's ginormous, how big he's gotten since she last saw him at six months. I mean, I mean, in all honesty, your your child is very tall for he his He is very age. tall. And, uh, and and that could be a good thing, but uh, that also could be, you know, a challenging at times mm-hmm. because people think he's older, he's than, older yeah. than what he actually so is. So this is what I'm saying. Half an hour ago, he was drinking soda off the table, like licking it off the table. He's still a baby. And that that's one of the things that I try not to get super sensitive about on especially online uh but a lot of times i post pictures of him and people are like oh who's that big kid who's that teenager and i'm just like Erx is five years old train your brain train your brain to see him as a baby i know we joke about it but i know i'm joking and i know you're joking but in the back of your mind it, it just sits there yeah. and the thing i think is tricky sometimes is that people see like they know me, and so they see me one way, but then it still logs in the back of your mind, and so you might not see other people that you don't know the same way. So I just I get a little sensitive when people because we know how how easy it is for people to see um, brown kids and black kids as five eight years older than they actually are. This is at five years old. We're making jokes about him looking Can like you a preteen. When he's 16, you know what I mean? 17. So it is funny, and I do laugh, and I do agree because he is ginormous. But um, one of the pictures the other day we I posted, and it was this general haha that he looks old. But I was like, yeah, but you have to look for the parts of him that do remind you that he's a baby. His little baby hands. He has little baby hands. You know, <laughs> his little face. His if you look in his little face, you can see that he's. Like he's not even six yet. So I'm holding on to it because I just know like eventually his voice is going to drop. He's not going to want to like, I don't want them in my bed right now, but I kind of do. So because I know that they're not going to, they're not going to stay there forever. And once they go on their own, they, they're not going to come back. I, I'm just like cherishing these. You have to. These years. And also, you know, when testosterone starts kicking in, the hormones start going. Before you know it, it's like, you know, you've got kids that are talking back to you mm. uh, and getting snappy because, you know, they're going through it. So, um, and then, know, you know, you have boys. So you have also boys. have to worry about the fact that eventually, if they're still in the house when they're getting mm. older, you got to mm. deal with the fact that I don't know. it takes longer to get out the bathroom. <laughs> what are you doing in there? <laughs> I know. But you know who's you know who I want to shout out? I want to shout out Jocelyn, my friend Jocelyn, who just like two days ago had her fifth son. Shout well, out to Jocelyn, who is home with a brand new baby boy, um, but is the only girl now in a house of five. 
six, including her husband, boys. And it is always a fun time when we go and visit them. But speaking of what you just said, like I cannot imagine in 10 years, in 12 years, <laughs> it's five boys running all, around that house. All I can see is like five young men. What's the stain on this towel? <laughs> Yeah, I'm not ready for like, that. Why do I have to wash ready. towels like over and over and over again, right? I know. It's coming. Mm, gosh. It happens to every single mother, I trust know, me. I know, I know. It's a weird... Yeah. I... My mother had three boys. Yeah. Well, I'm, I think I'm the closest thing to a woman my mother will ever have. <laughs> but that's nor here nor there. Uh, but yeah, she had three boys and, and we put her through it. I believe it. We put her. We put that woman through the ringer, uh, but she is still just as loving and caring and attentive as she was when we were little. And you know, she still thinks we're babies. Mm-hmm. You know, like she comes over the house and she wants to do my laundry and clean my stuff. And I'm like, Ma, you came to visit. You don't have to clean my house. It's true. And, and I say you I don't very, have to, but I accept it. Uh, but no, but I get self conscious, <laughs> right? Because you know, my mother taught me how to clean, and for the most part, I keep a clean mm. house, right? But it makes me feel self conscious because when she starts doing stuff, it makes me feel like I'm not doing it right. Mm. And I'm like, mother, forty years of this mm-hmm. trained me. So something James just said to me the other day is that people's intentions are generally good, especially people who know and love you, right? And so when you're not sure. Assume the best. So someone told me the other day, oh, it's really clean in here. Like someone made a comment about the house. And we're like, oh, it's really clean in here. And I was like, in my head, I was like, does that mean the house is dirty? And he was like, no, people like people generally mean the best for you. So don't take that as your house is usually dirty. Take that as it's a step up from what it usually like. It's usually yeah. clean, and now it's more clean. So the last time so, you came here, my house was dirty. What are you trying to say? See, that's how I would take it. I know because I'm I'd a New like, York. I'm a pessimistic <laughs> New Yorker. <laughs> and so you know, it just makes me feel a little weird when I see mom come over and she's like, "Can I do your laundry?" No, mother, you cannot go through my laundry basket. I don't want you grabbing my underwear. <laughs> I'm a grown man. I can do that all by myself. Go clean anything else you want. Mm-hmm. Don't touch my clothes. Well, but maybe it's see the best, right? Maybe yeah. it's maybe she sees that you're doing such a good job, and so she has to find something to do for you. Well, no, her excuse is, "Dude, you work like seven days a week. Let yeah. me just come over and help you." I'm like, "Ma, I can't trust you. You so." <laughs> Decades ago, like maybe 15, 15 years ago, when I, 15, 20, you know, maybe 25 years ago, when I had my first apartment, I think I was like 17 or 18, she had come over and she started cleaning the house and found my porno. Mm. Do you know That's too much. how awkward it is for like mom to come over and be like, what are these? And I'm like, mom, why are you touching? Why, why, did, <laughs> why did you have to go through the drawer that's well organized and go dig everything out to find what was under there <laughs> when none of it was messed up? It was all very well folded. Mm-hmm. There was no need for you to go in there unless you were putting something in there. But then again, you didn't have to take everything out to find all the Because I know where there. I put it. It wasn't in plain sight. Thank you. <laughs> And so, you know, those are, those are just things you deal with, but you know, it's mom and you just, you get frustrated, you get over it and you Mm -hmm. just keep it moving. And you assume the best. That's right. Well, you try. You try to assume the best. I know. My mom was over the other night and she was doing, um, she was doing homework with Lincoln and Lincoln pulls out two pencils to do his homework. One pencil is a good pencil for writing, and the other pencil has the good eraser. And so anytime he made a mistake, he'd have to put down one to pick up the one with the eraser and then go back to the other one. And my mom looks at me and she's like, Candace, isn't this your job? Aren't you supposed to make sure that he has a good pencil that has both a good tip and a good eraser? And I was like, listen. It works for him. <laughs> I buy- This is where I was saying... I buy him whole packs of pencils and he goes and distributes them to the whole school community. I I can't fight him on this. And if this is how it's got to be, this is how it's got to be. Did you see that they ate? You saw that they ate, right? They're fine. They're We're all good. We're Listen, good. As long so as I as smile and nod and walk out the room. Yeah, and that's all you can do. <laughs> so that's, that's pretty cool. So, um, so I'll probably be that mom, right? I, you probably you probably will be the bomb that you think you don't want to be kind of probably i don't know you but, know what you know what the sad <laughs> it's it's not a sad thing the scary thing is because sometimes this this could be a good thing we eventually always turn into our parents yes yes i've already started saying stuff that my mm-hmm. mother says and i'm like oh my god and uh, so, i know yeah. i just said today um you'll say that it's no you'll you'll say you're sorry, but it won't be okay. And my mom used to say that to me all the time. And it was in reference to like, I've already told you that you can't or shouldn't do that. 
and you're going to go, you're doing it anyway. And when something goes wrong, you will say sorry. But, and I know I remember the exact time she first said this to me, I was maybe 19, but I didn't have my driver's license and she had rented a car and she told me to sit in the car. Like I was sitting in the car and she forgot something. So she was going to go inside. And I literally moved the car from where it was parked to like two parking spots ahead, like two car lengths ahead. But I just felt like a big deal moving the car that distance because like that's a big deal when you You're don't have bold. a when you don't have a driver's mm-hmm. license. Right. And so she came back and she was like, Candace, you don't have a license. This is a car rental. Like anything could have happened. You would say you're sorry, but it would not be OK. And so it's not okay to like say sorry when you're doing something you know you shouldn't be doing. Yeah. Because then it's not really okay. And that, like, I remember that I was 19. I remember the day. I remember where we were, the side of the street. I don't remember the car, but like, I remember that whole thing. And that like stuck with me so divinely. (laughs) And I must say that like a hundred times a week to, to Lincoln, like, dude, you can't. Like, why are you licking soda off the table? <laughs> You're going to catch something or whatever, whatever the, the situation is. Or usually it's they go outside and he wants to ride his bike or like turn a corner. We were at Jordan's Furniture, the It Ropes course. And you know how big that parking lot is. He turned the corner around the building, but we were really far back and I couldn't see him. I couldn't hear him. I didn't, you know, the wind is blowing. I don't know what's going on. I was like, dude, you can't. You can't go over there. I don't know what's over there. I don't know who's over there. A car could move out of like it just I know that you're you think you're big because you're almost six, but you still need to stand over here. Be careful before I make you hold my hand. Or because you can hold my hand. She'll buy the the little attached like string thing. Like you you can only go but like three feet ahead of uh, of me. And then he'll you'll be like, oops, sorry. Oops, sorry. But what? That's fine. Oh, you're good. I guess it's fine now. Yeah, it just keeps jumping around and doing oh, this thing. She's, she's worried about the I was the, like, the it's live looking stream. at the computer. <laughs> it's well, weird. It probably thinks the computer is um a is person? it's a person or something. Mm, interesting. Oh my god. Oh my. My belly, my belly. <laughs> um so speaking of catching something from counters or god knows what not. <laughs> Uh, coronavirus is everybody ready for the coronavirus and i mean i'm laughing but but i i I think this is gonna get pretty serious Mm. you know it's like a lot of people don't realize that um in 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 a global era right we're 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 in a in a in a point in time in our history and in in our culture in where it is fairly easy to travel the globe and bring back countless things that you did not plan to bring in your luggage. Like, it's not souvenirs. To be souvenirs. fair, to take it, too. Yeah, or take it. And um, and it it's it's more likely today to have a, a very, very scary epidemic um, than it was three or four decades ago. Just because of how fast and how far it can go. And and how quickly it can spread. And so, you know, the, the government obviously is... is tr- well... I, I shouldn't say the government. We had uh, officials who are doctors, who are epidemiologists. Did I say that right? Mm-hmm. Who are saying that the it is inevitable that we're going to have a spread of coronavirus in the United States. But our commander, or for lack of a better word, the dude in charge, the dude in charge, seems to think that this is no big deal and that you know we got this. And I'm like, oh, you yeah, know. So, so it's scary. What do you, what, what are your thoughts about, um, you know, the possibility? I mean, we've already gotten a case in, in Boston. We've had cases in Washington. Mm-hmm. I believe there was a case in, in Texas, multiple cases and people who were brought into the country in California from a cruise, mm-hmm. uh, that had tested positive for the virus. What are your thoughts on this? Did they die? No, no, they didn't die. No. Um, I'm not worried about it. I mean, I think that. If it happens, we'll like figure out how to deal with it. I'm more worried about how we're talking about something that um, <clears throat> the sort of um, racial and um, the negative 
tones, they're not even undertones, the tones that people are using when talking about something that originated in China, right? There's just so much talk about how it came from China. And then they highlight, they show some, some old ass pictures of some lady eating a bat soup or some lady eating some, or some other person eating some weird thing. And then they connect it. Like they do all the things that they do, right? With, oh, this is cause like they're gross and they eat bats or whatever the, the case is. Um, I think that those things do more to uh, make everybody frantic and scared and not pay attention to what can help protect you from it and mm-hmm. what can help stop it or what the actual causes of it could be or what the actual um, outcomes from having it. Uh, the cases that I've seen of people who are who are who've died from it have been older people who might have been sick otherwise. Oh, may have had or, a compromised immune right, system. Right, a compromised mm-hmm. immune system or really young kids who would have had a, a compromised immune system. Now, as a parent, right, I have young kids. I don't have newborns, but I still have kids. I, I understand that, but the flu is killing people right now, like down the street. And at record numbers. You and, know? And it's more... <laughs> It's more of a of an issue than currently coronavirus is. I mean, yeah. when you think about how many people have died from the common the flu, flu versus how many people have died from coronavirus, I mean, it's 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 the picture is very clear, and I think that um, you know, you don't want to get hyper vigilant and you don't want to get hyper reactive, but um, I mean, I would like some of this energy around the flu. Like the flu Seriously. is actually killing people, right? Yeah. We should actually be reminding people to wash their hands and cough into their sleeves and, you know, like not go out if you're sick into public places. It's okay to say you can't go to a party or it's okay to miss out on whatever the event is because you're sick. Don't bring you or your sick kid. I mean, we should be talking about how important it is to let um, workers and employees know that it's okay, especially in this time, right? We're sickness and illness is running rampant it's okay to take a day off we should be um encouraging or like shaming um employers who are not Mm -hmm. allowing their employees to take care of themselves in this way like i feel like those are the things that people should be talking about or those are the things that the coronavirus should be leading us in the u.s to be thinking about um because if a if a new virus whatever the virus is if it comes it comes and we'll figure out how to deal with it when that time comes. And I don't want to be flippant about it, but, um, but we'll figure it out in the meantime, there are things, there are things to deal with right now Mm -hmm. and to distract ourselves with something that might come maybe, or is coming or when it comes or whatever, and not think about the things right now and not talk. I mean, some of the ways that we talk about the coronavirus, like the way that the coronavirus is caught is the same way the flu is caught. Yeah. Right. But nobody's talking about the flu. Like it's some kind of gross thing that you got from the jungle somewhere. You know what I mean? And like, I th- and I think that's because <laughs> it's a known thing, right? Like mm-hmm. you can get the flu and survive it and be like, Oh, or I, die. Or die. <laughs> talking about but, the people who die. But for the most part, for those that don't die, it's like, Oh, I survived the flu. This is nothing. You know, there's nothing to worry about. If I get the flu again, chances are I'll be okay. Um, you know but, what else is like that? What? Malaria in yeah. Africa. Like my my um my mother in law was like, Oh, we just got a little malaria. And I'm thinking, Mala- a little malaria, you know, like but it's just how they think about it. You just you just go and get the medicine and then you'll be fine, right? Yeah. If you don't have access to the medicine, then you'll have a problem. Like again, not trying to be flippant about it, but some things that we you know, when we were going to Ghana, it was this whole thing about the yellow fever and I was so like freaked out because my kid got a thing that probably wasn't going to work or whatever the case was but people are not even getting yellow fever vaccines anymore you know what i mean or we go to get the vaccines and they talk to us like oh you should get a rabies shot and james is like why the hell are we gonna get a rabies shot because we're going to god you know i'm from there right like you know we're going to live in a house we're not going to live under a bridge somewhere like, we're, not, we're not going on vacation to go stay under a bridge in a ravine like we're gonna be fine we don't need a rabies shot but it's just like those like it sounds ridiculous when you say it yeah. that way but if someone in a lab coat says it like if a nurse says it to you and you know and you're worried it makes you think about it it makes you think about it but again like you're going on you're spending thousands of dollars to go on vacation you're not going to fucking run with rabid dogs like yeah. you know what i mean so again I, I can't say this enough i'm not trying to be flippant about the coronavirus yeah. but the i mean in the in sort of some of the stuff that i'm interested in the coronavirus is not 
coming overseas in things that you're ordering from wherever you order them from, right? Like I saw a meme (laughs) somewhere that said, you know, those those little um, bubbles that you like to pop. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, that they're full with coronavirus. No, it says the the air is from China. Right. Like it's supposed to imply that all these little bubbles are filled with coronavirus. Right. Or that you're buying face masks, masks, masks. Mask. To protest, the, <laughs> there's too many of those words at the same time, uh-huh. but that you would buy a, a face mask and that to protect yourself from the coronavirus, but it comes from China, right? So it's bringing it with you. So it's not, CDC, it's not a thing. The CDC released a chart of the correct way to wear a mask if you're a man and any form of a beard to the exception of this, this, this is unacceptable. Oh. You're not wearing it right. So you literally would have to shave if you're a man that has a full beard, you would have to shave in order to wear the mask correctly to protect yourself. I almost shit my pants because <laughs> men were losing their shit. I will get Corona before I shave. Before my, I shave my, my beard? beard. <laughs> Is this because it will go on the beard or because your the beard hair will keep the mask from, from flush? From, from being okay. flushed to the skin. So. What are those things called? Because you said here, here, and here, but most people are so, listening. So, so you've got like the little Charlie Chaplin situation. Uh-huh, or you can call it the Hitler too. I mean, uh-huh. it, it depends. I prefer Charlie uh, Chapman. You, you have... You have the um, the little mustache, the, so, like the handlebar situation. Yeah, so that's okay because you could stick the handlebars inside. Yeah, and then you have like the little the little uh, chin. What is that? The, the bottom lip, like piece of like the little button. I guess they call it mm, the thing um, that whenever I see men with that, I'm just like, you missed the spot. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you shave your whole face and just miss that and whole so, spot? And so that's okay. Or if you have side um, sideburns, that's okay. But then you have to be clean shaven. And I'm like, mm. you don't want to see all this. Like, I literally look like a shaved hyena <laughs> in the butt or like a baboon's butt with no facial hair. You don't want to see this. Oh it's my horrible. God. And so, but you know, one of the things that I wanted to talk about, it's like, instead of, you know, you have all these clowns now in this administration <laughs> coming at you talking about, oh, I'm not going to have what I really want to talk, what I really would like to see is the, the CDC and the administration come out and give you the how-tos, how to wash your hands properly, mm. how to clean your home. Should you carry a bottle of Lysol and spray all your doorknobs every so often? Um, to prevent- Or when, when global warming gives us a 50-degree day in February, should you just open your windows and air out your whole house? Yeah, and, so and, we did this weekend. And so, you know, and, and talk about things like that or talk about, for example, um, you know, what are the plans? Okay, so if something does happen and we really have to, for example, start closing schools or start closing public spaces or areas in where, you know, this could pro- proliferate. Mm-hmm. What do you do? Do parents have a plan? Right. That's mm-hmm. so. That's that's mainly right. This is the Breezy Moms podcast. Mm-hmm. Talk about motherhood. Mm-hmm. We talk about um, you know things that could happen in, in your everyday life. What I want you to to think about is a sensible plan of what to do. For example, if your school decides that as a result of a outbreak they're going to close for two or three weeks, mm. what's your plan? Right? I mean that that should if if school closes for two or three weeks. For an outbreak like that, that should be a city situation that also comes down on businesses because right? I'm not sure what you're supposed to do with kids for three weeks outside of the summer. You know, and then what when do you, you still do, have to go example? to work? You're a child care <laughs> provider. So if you, you do run the child risk cares of, have to close down too? do you expose your children to the possibility of of of, you know, it, there's a lot to think about. And I don't mean to to suggest that we should go into this hysteric mode of oh my god i need to have a plan but you need to have a plan Mm -hmm. right Uh, as a i mean you don't need to have a basement full of dried astronaut food yeah which apparently you can buy online as like a like a doomsday prepper i'm i'm not gonna do that but i probably should have a couple jugs of water in my house and i don't so because you never know but just have a plan and i think that you know um lord have mercy uh the threat of a snowstorm will clear out the the supermarket in a hot flash yeah but the threat of coronavirus mm, there's not gonna be any food anywhere so you know i i'm i'm being realistic and thinking to myself okay what can i do to help myself and help my fellow humans from either contracting or spreading some infectious disease and you really have to think about these things and um i'm gonna come back to you on that in a couple weeks i'm gonna think about it 
you know, it's there's a lot of really good information on the CDC's website. Go on there and things that you can do to minimize, um, you know, first and foremost, even getting sick in the first place, but have a plan. And I think that our city officials at this point, if we know, right, because they've been saying this is going to be inevitable, uh, if we know that it is inevitable, I think that local towns, local cities really need to start planning on how to deal with local businesses, right? Because if it affects a school, it could easily affect affect the workforce, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know? And and so they, I think that there should be some sort of... Um, guidance or yeah. a guideline on um this is what we're going to do if something happens right and uh, and i don't see that happening nope and and i don't think it will happen right, <laughs> right? when you think about some of these local cities and towns yeah. it's like are they are they even having these conversations yeah. yeah i think it would be cool given how like mm, close my my block the block that i live on i know most m- almost most of the people on the block i think it would be interesting uh cool if like as a block by block you could even without the city i mean you can't you can't affect whether your job is open or closed right but you can think about if something like that is happening is everybody covered on our block you know the like older people who are on our block who we you know only see once or twice every so often um the people with small kids you know like if you are aware of the people or even smaller than that, if you're aware of what's going on or like have some kind of connection to the people on either side of you and across the street, that that's like six, six households that mm-hmm. could form a little network. It could be a good way to think about sort of outside of your nuclear, outside of your household, how you make sure that everyone's okay. Because if you're okay in your house, but you can't leave because, you know, you're quarantined. I just, right? oh my God, so I that's... just keep thinking about World War Z. I feel so, like this is how World War Z started. So that's the other thing. Like, so, um, you know, we have seen m- more and more throughout the entire globe at this point in all these hotspots and where coronavirus mm-hmm. is very um, prevalent that uh, they're suggesting at this point, you know, you can get get a test if it's available that would determine whether or not you have it. But the solution is for you to self-quarantine. Mm. What does that mean? Yeah, especially right? when you have to go to work. And... What does self quarantine look like in your house? What should you have there to help you not get into this funk or be depressed about the fact that you can't go and see the light of day for like fifteen days? You know, mm-hmm. can, and how long do you have to be quarantined? Yeah, I don't and, even and know so how we, long. we we don't know any of that, and I think that that's what our our public officials at this po- point should be talking about and um and figuring out. You know, what are the recommendations so that the general public has an idea of how to react when when it does hit? Because, again, they're saying it's inevitable. Yeah. Well, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Right. We'll have some we'll have we some might plans have to burn ahead that of bridge time. down we once we get the to, the, to the other side. Um, but anyway, it's there. Uh, it's in the back of our minds. I think that, you know, be proactive, you know, go out. Um, learn however you're about it. preparing however you're keeping yourself healthy from the flu probably will help you keep healthy from the coronavirus agreed so so wash your hands wash your hands that's one of the most my important hands things that you can do. feel crazy blistered because i have to wash my i mean i work with kids so i have to wash my hands so many times but um so that i don't forget um a tip for this is okay I think that my whole life I've thought the hotter the water is, you know, the closer to God. It's not good. <laughs> just, just like if you're washing dishes and you don't feel like, oh, ah, oh, ah, <laughs> then I promise you those dishes are not clean, right? Like Ooh. you should be like, ah, I just got to. Oh. You can't even touch <laughs> the sponge. Touch oh, my it. God. Right. Oh. But you can take down the water like the soap does its job. If you use soap, the soap will do its job. Um, you can take down the water a couple notches uh, because that will help with your hand and helps heal your skin and keep you from like um, blistering as much as like I can see all the little veins in well, my hand. Well, you got to so. remember, right? Like, uh, like chemistry. When you apply heat to something, it expands. It, mm. it, um, it, Is that opens, what's happening? It, it opens up your pores open up mm. with heat. And when you shoot it with a cold blast, everything just sort of kind of 
contracts. It's like uh, so you uh, want to wash your hands with cold water to keep the coronavirus out of your skin. <laughs> well, you know, no, just so, so that you're not you're not removing the essential oils of your skin with really really hot water, and you sort of kind of keep a a, a decent moisture level. It's it's not about coronavirus. It's about not walking around with ashy hands mm. and elbows, you know. So that's a good point. And when that's people really take point. like really hot showers, I love a really hot I shower, know, but me it's too. so bad for it's you. So bad for you. You know. So but anyway, speaking take care. speaking of stuff, coronavirus out. Leave. Go. <laughs> go away. Um, well, we're gonna be okay. I got some gifts today mm-hmm. that I want to talk about. I didn't even plan that like dry skin mm. segue, <laughs> but it, it works. Uh, so uh, Kansas has been doing a little something. I have dabbling into um, what I'm going to call all natural skincare. Yeah, I'm, and... I'm calling it a little potion making. I have felt so much like a sorceress. I've been like a uh, chemist is not the right word. Although the first thing I thought about is like sometimes my kitchen looks like an episode of Breaking Bad. Like it's just. Petri dishes yes, all over the place. Yes, everywhere. And... But then I think it's also like beakers and stuff. So um, I have been, I have been for probably the last year or so, especially since I just got back from, since I came back from Ghana in the summer and I came back with so much, like an unreasonable amount of shea butter from Ghana, which is the place where it comes from, right? So I got some really great natural um, unrefined shea butter from Ghana. And it's actually been sitting in my closet for a couple months because I didn't, or for that time, because I didn't know exactly what to do with it. Like, especially when you have so much. So the last few months I have been making a bunch of products and just using it myself. I use it on the boys. I use it. I give it to my family. You know, I just, and, and I didn't realize how much excitement or how fun or how calming, like, I finally understand why people like to bake. I didn't I didn't understand baking the at smell all. Alone. I didn't understand baking at all. But this sort of like mixing things together and a friend of mine just said like the pieces are more together than they are apart. Like like you can't do anything with arrowroot flour like you know, it's good. but when you add it with a few other things like it you makes the magic world. so yeah. it's feel it's been feeling a lot like magic making and uh i've decided in the last month or so that one i now have so many things that i've made in the house that i can't possibly use it all and that i want to share it with everyone so i brought some for you to try she did and i tried to, i tried them all so so the first one i want to talk about is the deodorant cream yes it is delicious so this has it's it's mint tea tree deodorant cream yes um the ingredients are all natural. They're all natural. So um, the things you can basically eat. <laughs> I mean, so, you shouldn't eat essential oil. Yeah. But um, all of the other ingredients. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm looking at, for example, the heavy shea hitters: butter, shea butter, coconut, coconut oil, oil, arrowroot, flour. You're looking at um, almond oil, magnesium hydroxide, peppermint, and tea tree oil. And when you open this, it's like. Oh my god, it smells so good! And so she bought me a little bit of deodorant cream, so you can use this um, instead of your typical like very abrasive deodorant. This is all natural deodorant Mm -hmm. that you can use, and it helps. uh, Well, according to the maker, right? It helps clear dark spots in your underarm area. Yeah. So so the great thing about that cream is that it it is functional, right? It's a deodorant, and it's going to keep you from being funky. Uh huh. But it also because of all of those ingredients, shape like. We all know, I am 100% positive that everybody watching knows the benefits of using shea butter, coconut oil. Like those are heavy hitter things right now that people totally know about. Some people are using pure coconut oil on their face or on their wherevers for, I mean, just shi- I'm I'm totally into shiny and bright. Like I send my kids to school shiny every single morning because that's how I feel better. Like that's how I feel best. Um and so this is mix is combining all of those things together. And uh, the great thing about some of those things like coconut oil and tea tree is that they have these antibacterial and antimicrobial properties. properties. And so they do double duty. They smell good and they like fight for you. So I like to think about it as nature nourishing and protecting you. Which is amazing. And yeah. so she brought over 
uh, a lip balm. This one is lemon mint. And mm-hmm. then she let me try another one that she made, which was absolutely amazing. I want that one too. That one's mint tea tree. And um, she's got some shea. So I'm assuming this is the shea butter. Yeah. So that is just, so I'm, I'm mixing mm-hmm. things cause I'm enjoying the, the recipe making in the process, but I also just have a whole lot of shea butter. So if you, if you like to mix things yourself and you just need some nice, fresh, straight from the motherland shea butter you can also just buy the natural ingredient on and then of own. course lavender shea so that is our lavender shea night cream night butter hmm. i'm getting used to saying these things like out loud so that's our lavender hour <laughs> like me the hour um lavender shea night butter and that is a shea butter mixed with some coconut oil and some lavender essential oil And I think of it as a nighttime thing because if you wear makeup, it might be like um, heavy butter might be too much to be a a base underneath your makeup. But a heavy butter will be fantastic for nighttime to sort of like replenish your skin from a full day out in the sun and whatever. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what the shea butter and the coconut oil does. And then the lavender scent is just, I mean, if you... It's very soothing. Lavender is very soothing. I I often need... uh, cues to tell me it's time to go to sleep and lavender is one of those really amazing natural cues that's just like slow down relax close your eyes <laughs> so so needless to say i'm going to be trying all of these yes and but I'm what so i really glad. wanted to point out is that she's turning this into a brand so it's yes. going to be called echo body and it will be available on your website mm-hmm. she's going to start selling the stuff so i'm going to use it um, we'll be talking about it on our show. She's going to bring some samples for the boys for us to use, right? Because this is gender friendly. It is. It and is. So that's important to know. And, um, and I'm, I'm excited. So, so I'm super I, excited. what I'm really excited about, like, I, I really like the other things too, but the deodorant is, is, was my entry into natural products. And the reason why I think that many people listening and many people out there have either, tried a natural product or know that they or think that they might want to try a natural product a natural deodorant product Mm -hmm. because there's a lot of information coming out now about commercial deodorants and the way that those deodorants works is that they most have aluminum like a lot of things you see now is aluminum free or like client like i should probably say aluminum free and that the aluminum goes into your pores and and expands and that's how it keeps you from sweating but then it's stopping your body's natural ability process, to... right? A natural ability to express toxins and whatevers out of your body. But the deodorant is like, no, we don't want that because everybody wants to be dry. So the the aluminum goes in and clogs your basically clogs your pores and stops you. And then you're not able to do your bodily functions the way you're supposed to. So when you use something that doesn't have aluminum, aluminum you still want like i don't think that people who are using natural deodorant want to be funky or want to be sweaty like i don't want to be any of those things especially running around after six kids every day so what some of these other uh, ingredients do is instead of going in and clogging your pores they allow your your skin to breathe but Coconut oil and tea tree oil are antibacterials. And so any uh, bacteria that's underneath your arm, it kills that. And that's what gives you a funky smell. And then the magnesium and arrowroot are the things that sort uh, that absorb the moisture. So the I'm finding in the last couple of years, the 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 point of natural things is it's to just like allow your body to breathe the way it's supposed to breathe. We're not intended to be like streaky, squeaky, dry, right? But you also need to function in the world. Yes. <laughs> and, and make sure that you're not, not literally have... <laughs> causing people to like faint as you pass exactly. them by. And um, so these things work together to allow your body to breathe the way it's supposed to, but also um, attack the sort of natural things that are happening under there. That So, so what's great... What's great is in some some uses. So I had James using it because you always find people who are like, yeah, I think natural is probably good, but I, but I can't, use can't. I sweat more than anybody you've ever met, or I have a body odor that's like stronger than anybody who ever lived on the planet. And what's been really cool, I mean, I should let him talk about it, but what's, what's been really cool is like there was a period where I think his body was detoxing from using the commercial deodorant. And so maybe you want to start using a natural deodorant on Friday when you're not like, 
like on the weekend when you're not going to go into the office or or something because you have to give yourself a chance to recover to go from through it what you've been i mean deodorant is one of those things like I, I don't know like whether you drink coke or pepsi you just like i've used dove since i was 17 like i'm gonna use dove for my whole life like I've used people are like, oh, I use secret. I've always used secret. Like we have this connection to the I use secret deodorant for such a long time. So you've been using whatever deodorant you've been using for a long ass time. You need a, a little bit of a transition period yeah. to, to get into to something adjust. new to, mm-hmm. to adjust. And there are lots and lots and lots of uh, natural products available. I encourage you to try, you know, like it's not one size fits all, although I've been having some really good um, results with mine. And then the other thing to note is that my this product does not have any baking soda, which uh, I was talking to some friends who, you know, you want to try something natural. And then what happens is you might have a bad reaction, right, because you've never tried this thing before. And I encourage you not to be discouraged by buy that because some people are allergic to baking soda and then you're like oh i can never wear i'm gonna have to use secret the rest of my life because i can't ever there are alternatives every like i in this process of learning about body chemistry and deodorant and all of that stuff like there are alternatives for everything Mm -hmm. and so if baking soda doesn't work for you maybe try something that has the arrowroot and the magnesium or if that doesn't work for you then maybe you should try baking soda just because some people are sensitive to baking soda doesn't mean like I'm not sensitive to baking soda and I started with a natural deodorant that had baking soda and it worked really well for me but I know that there are also a lot of people who are allergic to it so this is an option for I have to tell you that I am completely amazed but not shocked at the fact (laughs) that you you go guns blazing you're not afraid to try things you know a year and a half ago you didn't know anything about podcasting and (laughs) you have the show uh you know uh, two three years ago probably you were in the workforce trying to figure out what you wanted to do because you wanted to spend more time with your kids and you opened up a daycare Mm -hmm. and you know you're constantly not afraid to just look outside your box or what people would like to say this is where you should this is your box this Mm -hmm. is where you should stay Mm -hmm. you're constantly going outside of that and it amazes me to watch you just completely just do things that you know People don't expect you to do like make but, deodorant, <laughs> like make deodorant, but you're not scared. And so now you have this complete, you know, array of products that you could probably use and help so many people discover the, the amazing power of, of trying natural things and using and, and also being conscious about the fact that, you know, we have to, in some way, use nature to produce this stuff. And so you're doing it in a very eco-friendly way. Mm-hmm. Um, and in reusable tins, you can use these things over and over again. Yeah, for anything. And so the question becomes, uh, because we're getting some questions on our social media here on Facebook Live, uh, will this be available for Mother's Day? Because there's mm-hmm. some people that want to know. Uh, I love it. I love it. I'm so excited. It's yeah. so, I have to be like openly, I, I just have to admit, like, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing most days, right? I just wake up and I'm like, oh, I feel like doing this thing. And I'm going to shout out my mom because I, uh, my mom is, I, I think my mom is a savant. She just does whatever. And I think that that has been an example for my, both my sister and I, that you can just do whatever you want and it either works or it doesn't. And if it doesn't, then you move on to something else. Yeah. And then this is what I'm interested in right now and have had like I am so happy that it's working and so far for the people that have tried it I mean the having someone who like struggles with body odor and like everybody knows about it but they can't like they're using everything that they can think of and it still happens and then they try this product and the body odor goes away or struggling with like dark like dark rough like uh, summer's coming summer's coming and we all want to be out mm-hmm. in sh- strapless shoulderless That's sleeveless right. whatever and we all have insecurities and so i'm not saying I'm, I'm not saying it's gonna be perfect and like it's not a skin lightning cream but it definitely will enhance and give you some confidence Natural. that i've never had before naturally because when you think about it, there are products out there that help you lighten your skin right like a skin think, lightener <laughs> but think about the 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 chemicals that mm-hmm. are introduced into these products so this can help you it might not get rid of it 100 percent, but it's going to 
get you to your best. Yeah, it's gonna get you natural. feeling your best naturally. Yeah. yeah, and it smells amazing. Like I'm, I'm over so here glad you love smelling it. The, the the mint and the tea tree in this. I'm like, and I love. Tea. I'm I'm totally into two kinds of like like essential oils. Peppermint is my one of my favorites. Me and tea too. tree. Me too. Those I are my things. It. They're like workhorses in yeah. my house. Peppermint it, like in is a is a invigorating mm-hmm. scent so we always um diffuse it in the morning and so i i don't think they realize but like when uh my clients and the kids are coming in you don't even know that this the sort of, like everybody's always smiling when they come in i was like yeah you don't <sighs> know it's the peppermint i'm tricking all of you <laughs> so so i'm excited and, and so yeah it's gonna it is available i'm, I'm excited and congratulations thank you and can you tell people what the website is yeah sure so the um the brand is called echo body and it's E K O W. And, uh, that's both a shout out to, um, our favorite little rambunctious three-year-old Emery. Emery is Emery, Emery Echo. And also that the main ingredient in this is our shea butter that's from Ghana. So it just made a lot of sense to me to give a, um, a pretty strong, solid nod in that direction. And you can find it at echobody.com and that's E-K-O-W body.com. Fabulous. I know. So the deodorant is there. So wait, the- wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Hold. Pump the brakes, baby girl. What? Did you get a whole website for your product? Listen, I don't play any games. <laughs> so you either going to do it or you don't. <laughs> four weeks ago, she got breathed away. Five weeks ago, she got breezymoms.com, mm-hmm. right? And now, so... you. Girl, you are well. So I mean, you just have to do the things, and that's can like so on on the website on the Breezy Moms website. You can find they're all connected, right? Because I'm only one person, and I can't actually do all the things at once. But on the Breezy Moms podcast page site, whatever it's breezymoms.com, you can find information about our podcast. But you can also now find information about Echo Body and also the Echo Collective, because this whole thing started because I'm an entrepreneur and I'm trying to figure out like in a world full of entrepreneurs, like everybody's got a side hustle. Everybody's Mm -hmm. doing something. How do I do something for myself and also connect with other people who are doing the same thing that like I I don't need to be Amazon. I just need to find a crew of people who are all interested in like you just have to find a crew, a village of people who are like minded doing the things that you are interested in doing and get together. And you can you can kind of all shine bright together. Right. right. Like you just shine bright and then it comes. So that's where the Echo Collective is a group of a a place for entrepreneurs to, to gather and share their thing whatever their thing is and so on there also on breezy moms you'll see the echo breezy moms.com you'll see the echo collective and our friend emily remember Mm -hmm. emily that's right emily rose is our is also on the or a part of the echo collective and she makes the hand the handmade jewelry Mm -hmm. and her jewelry is amazing it's beautiful 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 and you can find a collection of her things um a very small collection she's a a just I can't even I can't even explain to you how much jewelry she's already made and is so fantastic at. But you can find a, a collection of her things on the Echo Collective um, portion of our site. And so I encourage you, if you're interested or looking for something for Mother's Day, definitely check out Emily Rose Designs and you can find it on BreezyMoms.com. That's amazing. Yeah. So so, so check us out. I'm, and, I'm excited. I'm like, yeah. this is mine. Do not even look at it. <laughs> it's mine. And so if you've ever thought about trying a natural deodorant and you know me, you're listening to this, so you know me, I wouldn't steer you wrong. So check us out. And these juicy lips always need lip balm. So I'm super excited about this. <laughs> Although I'm going to buy the other one too, because the other one I really, I really like that The other one. smells good. Yeah. Mm-hmm, it's delicious. So it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, um, a, a, a kit. Right, you got a mint tea tree deodorant, a lip balm, and coming soon. I'm going soon to is kiss coronavirus away. <laughs> well, you'll have tea tree, which is is no, but it's antibacterial. Corona is not a bacteria. Right. We're in trouble. It's I right. thought it was. I thought the let's tea tree was going to help us against corona. Let's figure something out. Um, so cool. So I'm excited for you. And thank and, you. And I appreciate that. Th- th- this is huge. I'm so I'm so super excited. And and to say it out loud and to put actual product like I'm. Never thought I would. She be came doing in here. She like had this. them wrapped up. I was in a ready. Bandana, and she opened it. She, got, I got gifts for you, and I'm like, oh, 
what it's like is a whole this? thing. And then I started opening and smelling it. I was like, oh God, this smells amazing. I know. Stop. It's it's one of those things. It's the first thing that I've done where, you know, a lot of times, a lot of times we women, moms, whoever, but typically we, uh, women, um, you sort of downplay the things that you're doing. And you're just like, oh, anybody, you know. But this is one thing that I feel like I can sort of like proudly say, like, this shit is awesome. It really <laughs> It and really she made awesome. it all herself. And I made it myself. In her house, in your kitchen. That's amazing. Yeah. So in in my spare time between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m., I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> and then she wonders why she can't sleep. <laughs> well, that's what I do when I can't sleep. Might as well do something. This is actually a labor of love out of not being able to sleep. Yeah. And so I've gotten through some insomnia the last few months. So anyway, uh, check us out on echobody.com. Do that. Um, should we wrap up? It's up to you. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. I'm tired. I'm going to be up at two o'clock in the morning. I might as well get some sleep. Um, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Oh, I, my, my mom. So hard tip was the cold water. I totally, I totally talked about it too soon, but the mom. So hard tip for this week is to use cool water when you're washing your hands. I, I spend a lot of time washing my hands over and over and over again, and I was blistering. So beyond using Echo Body products, you should start by using some cool water when you wash your hands. Will help you like re- repair, recover, or fix your hand problem. Which, which is, I, I would definitely say it's good because usually when I wash my hands, I'd see, I, okay, so. I wish I could show you. <laughs> so I had applied the Echo Body deodorant cream on the side of the hand because I wanted to try the product and smell it. And then I went and I washed my hands because I was touching my computers and stuff and I didn't want to get any other products on it. So look at the difference. Mm, dude. Ashy. I wouldn't bring you bullshit. <laughs> ashy. Smooth and lovely. And I love it. Mm. And so I'm so uh, glad. I'm super and that's excited. not even where it's for. <laughs> no, exactly. I mean, so, but look at that. Look at that. I can see. I can see. You need to take a picture. We're going to post this we'll on, the take- Bree- <laughs> on the Breezy Moms podcast. We'll take a picture after we do the closing or else oh, we'll oh, waste oh, time. That's right. Okay. We'll post it on. We'll post but it yeah, on. it's a really great, it's a real, I was going to stop, but it's a really, it's a really great product. And I, I think of it, it is deodorant, but it also works for anywhere where skin touches skin. So if you're like me, you've got like a little chub rub going on on your thighs, a little chubbiness going in, on man. under your boobs, in between. Like I'm, I'm excited for this. I used this all of last summer, um, but even more excited for this new formula to use this summer when you're, you know, like it's just hot. It's just, you I'm, know, <laughs> I'm getting there. Look yeah, at- you just wanna, you just wanna slather it on under any <laughs> crease, any crease you have, you can put it on. Look at this. I'm gonna need it. I'm going to need a bra soon is what I'm going to need. Lord have mercy. It's true. Um, Okay. All right. So on that note, thank you so much for being with us this week and every week and uh, listening to the things that we, that come up. Um, Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really still super excited to be here every week and hope that you guys, you know, we're two months into the new year in 2020. That's right. We're all super excited about 2020, you know, eight weeks ago. I hope you are still excited Mm -hmm. as we wrap up black history month. I hope that we, we continue sort of, I've been feeling so much love on my time on all my different timelines of all the awesome things that are, um, have been shared things that I've learned about now for the first time. Again, like sharing all of this new information that's beyond Martin Luther King and Frederick Douglass is really, really fantastic is the only useless word that I can use to describe how amazing it is to, to, to scroll every day and see good thing of things about us and not just yeah. like there, the same been crap. So that people many always um, say. amazing things that have happened since the civil rights movement. And I think that we need to um, definitely you spend know, time on that. Yeah. And, and think about all the good and positive things that uh, communities of people of color bring to the world. And of course the spice and the flavor, Mm. because that's what we are. We are. And, um, and it's amazing and it's awesome. So happy black uh, history month to everyone out there and keep it going and keep it going. Let's celebrate it it all year. All right, so that's it for us. Tune in this week and every week on all of the different places where you can find us. Share and like our show because that's how more people find us and um, how the show grows. So again, thank you so much. And until next time, bye. This show is produced by Tom Ortiz at Digital Stream Radio. It's available for download on Podbean. 
follow us at Facebook at Breezy Moms Podcast or email us at breezymomspodcast at gmail.com. Until next time, don't stress, just breathe.